leadership is about motivating people to take action, to buy into your vision so that you get to achieve the business outcomes that you desire. Whereas management is more about below the line stuff uh, that ensures that boxes are ticked, uh, that productivity is where it should be, that efficiency is where it should be, uh, that we're getting everything from our job card to our invoices, etc., etc., etc. It's about systems and it's about processes. But what we're talking about for this month is leadership your ability to motivate your people to help you achieve your goals and along the way theirs as well so today what I want to talk to you about is understanding the different types of personalities uh, that you have on your team and what type of leadership they are going to require from you so it, uh, leadership requires you to take action. You are not just the leader because you have the keys to the shop. That makes you the key owner. But if you're not using uh, particular tips and strategies and awareness with your team members, then the only thing you're going to be leading is yourself. Your team will not follow along with you. So there are six types of or leadership styles that you should be aware of and each one will um, be reflective of perhaps some of the members of your team but your job as the leader the empowered leader is to actually recognize which of your team members require a certain type of leadership some of your team members are going to be motivated differently and they will require different things from you and it's your job to recognize the differences. If you go and try and put a blanket over everyone and lead them in the same way, some of your team members will respond well to that but others will not and they'll actually uh, draw back into themselves and in worst case scenario uh, you could end up losing a good person all because they weren't able to get what they needed from you as a leader so of the six leadership styles I'm going to talk to you about three of them today so make sure you catch my live tomorrow so that you can get the other three but the first three that I'm going to talk to you about ones that we really need to be mindful of that if this is currently our predominant leadership style then we really Really need to make an effort to not use these predominantly so the first one of these is actually being autocratic so an autocratic leader you know if you think of the old phrase it's my way or the highway that's your autocratic leader there's very little room for input from the team and uh, you're basically given instructions and you must follow the instructions and if you don't well there's probably no place for you on the team so you know think of like a dictator you might be dictator Dan and if that is how your workshop operates or that's how you operate as a leader you probably don't hold on to team members for very long so this is not necessarily a productive form of leadership because it's operating on fear and your team members may have enough fear inside of them that they're actually actively looking for another job okay so there's no collaboration with a, an autocratic leadership style it's purely the owner or the person in charge enforcing their will on the people and they have to do it that way and that's it. So definitely not so much a style of leadership that we want to be your predominant style. There are times when you might need to be a little bit autocratic, like when you can see that people are falling behind with their jobs, with the vehicles that they're working on, they're not gonna turn them in on time. You might see that you, one of your technicians is on his phone when he should be working on the car. You might get a bit autocratic then and say, put the phone down, get back on the car and let's go, okay? that's employing an element of autocratic leadership style, but just don't let it be your predominant one. So that's autocratic leadership, think dictator. Number two is what we call laissez-faire. Now, I know from experience that many of you are gonna identify with the laissez-faire leader. You will perhaps have been laissez-faire with your leadership style at some point in your uh, business owning career, and perhaps you recognize that it wasn't working for you and you've managed to adapt one of the other styles. But if you are the type of person that does not like conflict and avoids it at all costs you are likely to be a laissez-faire leader and in these situations the team is largely left to run itself and the owner hopes that they can just go about doing their own job and that the team will sort themselves out so if there's any conflict in the team the owner doesn't get involved they tend to stand back and watch to see if the team will resolve it 
And you can also lose a, a lot of good people from your team if you employ this leadership style predominantly because there are people in your team who will need structure and there's no structure to the laissez-faire leader. It's just whatever will be, will be. Um, some days there might be a clear understanding of what work needs to be done and other days there's not. And your people that like to work to a list or like to know what cars they'll be working on for the day will not thrive with a laissez-faire leader. So it's predominantly themed by not liking conflict. So if that's you, ask yourself is you not wanting to uh, be in conflict situations to be you know confronted by customers or confronted by team members actually playing out in a way that your team is left to run themselves if they are then i highly recommend uh, that you make sure that you uh, watch today's video and tomorrow's video so that you understand how you can transform your leadership uh, to become something that the team actually wants to follow. So that's our laissez-faire leadership. It's really no leadership at all. It's just everyone fending for themselves. Our third type of leadership that we'll talk about today is what we call transactional or commonly known as the carrot and stick approach. So carrot and stick often comes in where we've got a team who's underperforming and the owner thinks, I know I'll offer a bonus scheme and they'll create a cash bonus incentive scheme. So here we're dangling a carrot, the cash, in order to get the result that the, the owner thinks they want, which is really just to get the team to do the job that they're paying them for initially. Now, often that dangling of the carrot will also come along with, and if we don't get there, then I'm taking away Friday lunch or I'm taking away smoke breaks if people actually still have them. So it can often be the carrot dangle and punishment as well. It also crosses over into our autocratic leadership style where an autocratic leader might use some elements of transactional by saying, if you don't have this job done by five o'clock, don't bother coming tomorrow. That is also transactional leadership. So it's very much using the premise that all of your team members might be driven or motivated by the same thing, usually money or so you think. And the reason that carrot and stick leadership fails so often is because each of your team members is an individual. And for the one guy that might be driven by money, you might have four team members that are not. They're more motivated towards lifestyle or further education, or they have a genuine interest in your business and they want more responsibility. So there's a great book to help you course correct away from transactional leadership, and that is called Drive um, by Dan Pink. So if you are struggling to get your, get your team to just even do the job that you pay them for over the 38 or 40 hour week, you've first got to sit down with each of your team members to find out what's driving them to even come to work each day. Don't try and close the gap by offering a bonus system before you're even getting, you know, 85 to 90% productivity out of them. Because your opportunists on your team, are the one who might be deceitfully geared towards more money, they're just going to keep pushing the envelope and they'll watch for you to offer the bonus they'll speed up a little bit to achieve the bonus and then they'll wait for you to take your eyes off the prize and they'll just click back a gear and still expect to take the money then they'll expect a little bit further down the track when you step back and when they step back another gear that you're going to offer them something else so be very, very careful about offering incentives when they haven't even covered off the basics of what you pay them for every week. So if you're using carrot and stick, have a think about it. Have you even inquired with your team members in a feedback forum, a performance review, as to what does motivate them? If they did achieve a goal, how would they like to be rewarded? Don't think that because the way you like to be rewarded or what would motivate you is gonna motivate the people on your team. So that's transactional or carrot and stick motivation. And today we've spoken about our autocratic, our laissez-faire and our transactional leadership. Tomorrow I'll come back and I will talk to you about the remaining three leadership styles and about how uh, you can discover uh, when you need to change between styles or even have a mix of all six. I hope you found that interesting. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow.